The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection, and our time for reflection leader today is Reverend Father Matthew Carlin, parish priest of St Francis of Assisi Parish, Port Glasgow. Presiding officer, members, thank you for allowing me to address you today. The third time I met Pope Benedict XVI was particularly memorable because it was in Bellahouston Park in Glasgow. Uh, following his death on the 31st of December, many around the country, I'm sure, thought back to the state visit that he made to the UK in September 2010. I was in seminary at the time and had the privilege of serving at the altar when, in the course of his visit, the Pope came to Glasgow and celebrated Mass in the same location as his predecessor, John Paul II, had done in 1982. My own part in Benedict's historic visit wasn't what you would call a starring role. I was candle carrier number six. In his homily at Mass in Billahouston Park, then in speeches and talks delivered in London and Birmingham, Pope Benedict challenged us all to focus on what really matters, to raise our gaze, to strive for lives of authentic goodness and true joy. This we can do by rejecting a vision of life which measures happiness in terms of power, prestige, and possessions. These things are fleeting and can never satisfy the deepest longings of the human heart for peace and happiness. Instead, as he said to the young people gathered in Glasgow, there is only one thing which lasts, the love of Jesus Christ personally for each one of you. Search for him, know him, and love him, and he will set you free from slavery to the glittering but superficial existence frequently proposed by today's society. Put aside what is worthless and learn of your own dignity as children of God. Recognizing the unique dignity and infinite worth of each and every person is a guiding principle for seeking the common good, which should be at the heart of the work of legislating and governing. This was recalled by Benedict XVI in his address at Westminster Hall, as he invited lawmakers to recognize and respect the ethical underpinnings of democracy. It is, he argued, only when public authorities and religious bodies, including the Catholic Church, respect each other's competence and limitations that they can cooperate for the common good. In this way, he said, such basic rights as religious freedom, freedom of conscience, and freedom of association are guaranteed. It's my prayer today that such fruitful cooperation may continue to thrive in Scotland. Thank you. 